This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. God has a prize for you in 2018 that's going to blow your wildest dreams. It's going to take the top off, take the limits off. God's going to show you stuff that you've been praying for, things you've been believing and standing for, because he's the God of the surprise. Hallelujah. And he wants to surprise his people with good gifts and blessings being poured out and heaped upon us. Hallelujah. God wants us all to reach our highest potential. However, many are limited in expressing his call on their lives because someone in a higher position may have imposed boundaries on them. These glass ceilings are coming down in Jesus' name. Galatians 3.28 says, Because of Christ, there is no distinction, neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, and that we are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all a part of God's family. Therefore, we can equally do all that he wants us to do, regardless of our age, our gender, or social status. There's change coming. Are you ready for your change? It is an unconditional agreement between God and Jesus, and we benefit from it. We can all participate, male, female, bond free, whoever can be able to access the Father. The Change Experience, August 10th in Toronto, Canada, and September 28th in New York City. Call, text, or go online to register today. I'm a world changer. This is Changing Your World with Creflo Dollar. Now from the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, here's Pastor Taffy Dollar with today's message. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, and Colossians chapter 2. I want to talk about who's the boss. That's always a big one. I was over in Africa and... Back in January, we were there, and Creflo was celebrating his birthday, and we had a Q&A time, and that was one of the things they wanted to know was, who is the boss? <laughs> and so hopefully through what we look at in the Word of God, you'll be able to answer that by the Spirit of God. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Someone say, Jesus is my redeemer. Jesus is my redeemer. And so it was through the redemption of his blood, his precious blood that was shed on uh, the Garden of Gethsemane and on Calvary's cross that we as the propitiaries and the, those who are the beneficiaries of it have the opportunity to have the forgiveness of sin. It says, who is by who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and what? So all things were created, some might say, by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. The Amplified says in verse 18, he is also the head of his body. Some might say his body. Now, when we look at this word head, we want to look at what it means here. Jesus being the head and by him, all things are for him and all things are created by him. And he is the head. Seeing the Amplified says he is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, that he alone in everything and in every respect might occupy the chief place. And that's what God wants to do is occupy the chief place place, standing first and be preeminent in our lives. So we want to look at this area of this word head as it is described here in the New Testament. In fact, turn to chapter 2, verse 19. It says, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increases with the increase of 
God. So verse 19 in the Amplified pretty much says the same thing. It is through the head that all things exist by him, for him. And he says it's through the head that all things are jointly connected. All things are nourished, that they are ministered to, that they are increasing with the increase of God. The Amplified says that through the head that it grows with a growth that is what? From God. So when we look at chapter 1, verse uh, 16, we look at verse, uh, the same chapter, the next chapter, chapter 2, we understand some things where the head is concerned, that he is the beginning and he wants to provide that uh, preeminence in our life, in every respect of our lives. So I want to look at this word, kephale, from the Greek, K-E-P-H-A-L-E, K-E-P-H-A-L-E. I want to look at how it's used in chapter 1, also in chapter 2. This is what the word head is used. In so many instances, we use the word head, meaning the beginning of a, over a company or the head of a department or um, the head of the house, um, and so we want to look at what the Bible says in the context of this word, because I think so many times we translate and we allow our Western mindset or we allow our slang or Webster dictionary to define what these words mean. But we have to understand that the Bible was written in a time where there were horticultural principles, agricultural things, and they were, you know, some were Greek, some were Hebrew. And so we have to understand that context is king. So we can't take the word head here in the English and just assume that it means the same thing back then as it does now. Because when we look at that word head, it's talking about Jesus being the head of the church. Him being the beginning of everything, the first. He, through his presence, his personhood, that we as the body of Christ are connected to him. And it is out of him that we grow and we become developed in the things of God as a body. Individually, every joint, every part, every organ supplies that which is necessary because it is connected to the head. And so this is foundational. This is pertinent for us to understand this area. So he says that it is through him, not holding the head from which all the body by joints and, and bands, having nourishment ministered. So we as the body of Christ, we receive nourishment. We are nourished. You know, you take your vitamins, your supplements, and things like that. Why? So it can nourish your body. But it's through the Word. It is through Jesus that we are nourished. That's why it's so important for us to take our time and be in meetings and sessions and hear the Word, because it is through the Word and our relationship with the Word that we receive the nourishment that we need. And we're ministered to. And He serves us the Word, and He serves us through His life and through His example of uh, being that extension of love and grace and power. And the Scripture says that we are knit together. The body of Christ, though it be broad, though it be global, but yet there's a knittingness, there's a oneness that connects us all together. And the scripture says, as a result, we increase with the increase of God. The Amplified, it says it grows. How I many you know God wants you to grow? That you grow with a growth that is from God. And so when we are in relationship with the Word and we allow the Word of God to have preeminence in our life, it'll cause us to mature and to develop and to be all that God has endeavored us to be because we are nourished by Him and we're healthy and we have that, uh, that which brings forth growth and development in our life. 
So when we look at this other area, we can look at Ephesians chapter 4 as it relates to this word help. Because we're looking at this morning, who's the boss? That's the million, that's the $1.5 million question. Taffy, who is the boss? And hopefully we'll provide enough evidence for you to be able to answer that question today as we look at some of the scriptures and how it uses this word. Because frequently we use or we assume that the Bible used to, inhead, to imply boss or chief. And so we miss in many instances the broader context of the meaning because we uh, apply it only in the English language. But the word head is a metaphor. It is a, a noun. And this is uh, what we understand concerning how it's used in the Greek. So in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, it says, here it is again, from whom, referring to Jesus, from whom the whole body, not just a portion of the body, not just, you know, a majority of the white body or, you know, the black body, the brown body. He says, from whom what? The whole. Somebody say whole. whole. From whom the whole body. It is the whole body that Jesus died for and that he's after having a relationship. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, there it is again, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making itself of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now when we look at this in the Amplified, let's look at this again. For because of him, referring to Jesus, the person of grace, grace and truth, because of him, the whole body, the church, and all of its various parts, closely joined, firmly knit together by all the joints and ligaments which with it is supplied. When each part with power, the Amplified says, adapted to its need. So every part is supposed to get the sufficiency. It's supposed to have the power that meets its need and is able to equip it to function in the way that it is designed to function. So it says, when each part with the power adapted to its need is working properly in all its functions, working properly in all of its functions, so your part in the body of Christ is designed by God to function. It's not to be in dysfunction or to malfunction, to be inactive, but whatever it is that God has placed on your life and where he's plugged you into the body of Christ, he says that it may function. And the scripture says that it grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. So there's a fullness that God is after. How many know in 2018, things are just happening like left and right? I mean, there's so much activity in the realm of the spirit. And so there is this thing that God wants to do where the body begins to operate in the fullness of what it was designed, that it becomes mature. And things will just begin to take place overnight. I'm believing that, you know, I was talking uh, a few days ago how God is a God of the surprise. I believe in 2018 that he just wants you to know that he's still God. And he has some things that only he can do in your life. He wants to astonish you in such a way and just let you know I still am in the position to do what I promised in my word. And so he says he builds himself up, that it grows to feel full maturity, not just mature to a certain point and stop, but I'm telling you where it's functioning 100%. I mean, you don't want your body, certain parts of your organs to be working and then other ones not working and you got to take this out and oh Lord, they, gonna, they say I need to remove this and oh Father, no, you want 100%. Amen. 100%. So that as a result, it can be fully functioning. It can be at the place where it does what it was designed to do. 
Now, granted, you know, you may have to remove a spleen or a gallbladder or have a kidney or whatever the case may be, but how many of you know, we know when those things are removed from our bodies. And so those things are there for a reason. And so when things begin to malfunction, in many instances, you know what's going on. And your body even will begin to give you a signal that something's not working like it's supposed to work. So he's after, and he describes here, the full maturity of the body, that it grows and it develops into a place. And so when we look at this word kafali here, that word in the Greek means source. Kafali means a source that produces growth. Every part of the body is connected to the head, and if the connecting is severed, even a perfect healthy member will wither. Every part is connected to every other part. That's why it's so beautiful about the body of Christ that we can become that diverse, interconnected reflection of what God wants to do. And when people look at the body, they can begin to see the demonstration of who and why Jesus died. So it is every part that is interconnected to every other part. The husband to the wife, the wife to the husband, the uh, different parts, the prophet to the pastor, the teacher to the evangelist. And each has a different function that causes it to depend on every other member. So that person, that part depends on the other part. You know, the kidney depends on the heart, and the liver depends on the heart. And so all these things, they have to connect one with another. And as a result, they function, and they provide the health that is necessary as one unit. And so when we look at this word again, kafali, it means a source of life that is springing from the head. It's a source of life that springs from the head, and it's from the head, the entire body, grows with the growth as it is supplied by the head and held together by every ligament and sinew. Somebody say source. source. So the head is the source, the source of life. He is out of the head. Things began to develop. Just like out of the heart that it pumps and it provides the blood and the life and it goes into the arteries and it circulates and so forth and so on. So the scripture says that Jesus is the head. Now, when we look at this word, let's look a little further at another illustration here over in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Because in Webster's dictionary, that word head is defined as authority, command. And so that's why it's so important for us to understand the biblical meanings, the biblical definitions of what the words are, and not to lean on contemporary English translations or connotations of how we use the word. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we want to look at verse Let's look at verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it says, But I would have you know, I would have you to know that the what? That the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ, what? Is God. The Amplified says, I want you to know and realize that Christ is the head of every man. The head of a woman is her husband. And the head of Christ is God. And so this word here is also meaning that the definition of this word head is source. It's talking about how man came out of Christ. And how Eve came out of Adam. And how Christ came and manifested himself through God. It was Jesus who, the scripture says, manifested himself over 2,000 years ago in the form of God. 
He functioned as a man, but yet he was anointed and he was equipped by God. So this isn't talking about, you know, the head of every man is, uh, head of every woman is the man. And so that means that, you know, the man is to command. Because otherwise, uh, you know, it, it would just not be in the way of how it's described here. He says, I would have you know that the head of the, every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. It is how something derived. Somebody say derived. derived. How it came into being. From how it was manifested is the source, is the basis that the woman was coming from the man and came out of the man and how Christ came out of God and the man came out of God. So it's important for us to recognize what the scripture is saying here and understand that it's not about authority. That word here in the Greek does not reference um, the authority per se as much as it does being the source and how something derives. So the source of man is the creator and thus we say that the head of every man is Christ because he was made through him and brought forth to birth. The head of the woman is the man because she came out of Adam. She was taking where from his side. You're not his rib, you know, no, that means side. Yeah, you, you know, you my rib, you know, you my rib. No, side by side. That's because I'm supposed to be by your side. I'm not supposed to be behind you. I'm not supposed to be in front of you. But rib means side. So she was taking from the man, from his flesh, and has him as her source. The head of Christ is God because he is from him. The man is the head of the woman since she has taken her being from the man. And Christ is the head of us who believe because we are what? Made from him. And the church said, Amen. Amen. It's getting tight up in here, but it's all good. <laughs> God's not trying to take anything from us. But God wants to position us in a way so we can fulfill our highest potential. He's not trying to uh, set you up because you, you know, don't have enough intelligence to be able to recognize the Holy Spirit. But I believe part of why God created man and created woman because he gave them both the articulate speech where they could commune with one another and they communicate with God. Face to face, the scripture says. When he talks about how I would make the woman help, does not mean some slave, some kind of doormat. Uh, you know, women in the Old Testament, of course, they didn't have any rights. They were property and were treated like minors. But under this new covenant, glory be to God. It's a better covenant. And because of that better covenant, he talks about what's being help, which is meat, canago, that is face to face. And he says that he would make woman, and woman would be that strong rescue. And she would be a strength. And so it took the woman being in a position where she could be in a position she would be face to face with the man. And in some instances, it talks about opposing and corresponding to him. Yeah. Think of that. And so we, as women in the body of Christ, we must begin to think in line for how God sees us and not allow the world to dictate not allow the world and society to dominate our thinking and to cause us to think less than what God's word has said concerning us. You are a powerful being. You have the strength of God on the inside of you. And so it is through that strength that God used Eve, even as 
They were disobedient in the Garden of Eden. It was through Mary's obedience that he brought the Savior into the world. I now understand that it it takes a real man to function within biblical equality. Jesus came to get rid of all male domination and female subordination. This nine message series is jam packed with revolutionary knowledge that has been developed with radical women and men like you in mind. Speakers include Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Sarah Jakes Roberts, Lisa Bevere, and more of your favorite speakers who will lead you into a fun and exciting life-changing experience. For a love gift of $50 or more, you will receive this nine message series of the 2018 Radical Revolution Conference. Get Creflo Dollar's latest book, The Radical Life of Grace, for an additional gift of $20. There's change coming. Are you ready for your change? We are now the beneficiary of healing, the beneficiary of redemption, the beneficiary of righteousness, the beneficiary of prosperity, the beneficiary of peace. And he says, the only thing you got to do is believe this agreement between me and my son. It is not conditional. It is an unconditional agreement between God and Jesus, and we benefit from it. There's so much illumination. I mean, it's so much in the Word that it just, it just opens up. We can all participate, male, female, bond free, black, white, rich, poor, whoever can be able to access the Father. Come and receive your breakthrough at The Change Experience, August 10th in Toronto, Canada, and September 28th in New York City. Call, text, or go online to register today. We just love to hear your praise reports and testimonies. We want to know what God is doing in your life as a result of this broadcast. Zanelle from South Africa sent us this testimony. She writes, I didn't know how to receive God's provision in my life. Through the series on how to receive God's provision, I got my breakthrough. I got a job after three years of unemployment. And she writes to say, thank you. Zanelle, thank you for sharing that awesome praise report. Again, if you have a testimony or praise report to share with us, please write, call, or email us to let us know. When visiting New York and Atlanta, join Creflo Dollar at World Changers Church International. Service times are Saturdays at 6 p.m., Sundays at 10 a.m., and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us online at creflodollarministries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.